Hello there. In today's video, I am going to be making a trade axe tomahawk. I'm starting with a piece of one inch by a quarter inch mild steel flat stock. The first step is bending it over to form the eye of the axe. Now I'm going to use a mandrel to make sure that the eye is the right size. The mandrel is just an inch and a quarter piece of round stock that I cut off. It's tapered near the end so that it can be more easily driven in. Now I'm going to close it up a little bit more tightly around the mandrel. You want to do this on both sides so that the blade will stay in the center of the eye rather than drifting to one side. Now I'm going to pound out the eye and just clean things up, make it align properly. Mild steel is relatively soft, so we're going to be inserting a piece of a file as a bit. It's not strictly necessary to add a harder bit, but it will make it last longer between sharpenings. First I'm just working it down a little bit so that it's the same width as the flat stock. Now I'm tapering the inside edge so that it will weld a little bit more nicely. And now I'm just flattening it out a little bit more. Before moving on to the weld, we want to clean things up as much as possible. Get all the mill scale and rust and grit off of it. The wire wheel is faster, but the hand brush gets into nooks and crannies better. It's particularly important that the tool steel bit be as clean as possible. Tool steel is harder to weld than mild steel. It doesn't have to be perfectly shiny, but the cleaner it is, the better your chances are. Now I'm wedging the bit into the axe head. For now the friction is holding it together, but once it heats up that will no longer be the case. So we're going to wire wrap it so that it'll stay together in the fire. Wire wrapping is a modern technique, they didn't do it historically. Waste a perfectly good wire after all. But historically you would have had an assistant to help you get everything in place, and besides historical steel is easier to weld. Trying to do the weld by yourself without wire wrapping is a real pain. You have to be really confident and competent at welding. Then it goes in the fire. You want to keep turning it and heat it up very slowly and evenly. Otherwise your wires will burn through and it'll all fall apart. All you want to do for now is heat it up to the point where it's glowing. Then you want to take it out and go over it with a wire brush, get out any coal gunk that might have got in there. After that you want to cover the whole thing in borax. Really try and get it into the seams. The borax changes the melting point of the surface layer, potentially liquefying some of the mill scale that will have formed. It also forms a glassy coating over the metal. This keeps the oxygen away from the steel and prevents more mill scale from forming. It also keeps the coal dust out of the seams. When forge welding, it's very important that the piece be heated correctly. Because of this, you're going to spend a lot of time looking into the fire. And because the fire is running at full tilt for forge welding, you're going to want a pair of welding lenses, otherwise you're going to give yourself cataracts pretty early. You want to heat up the billet until all three layers are the same color. Through the welding lenses, they should look like butter in a microwave. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't pick this up. You need to watch it carefully. The difference between welding temperature and burning temperature is very little. Once it's heated appropriately, you need to move fast. You've only got a few seconds of welding temperature. You need to hit it in a very specific way. The blows need to be soft but firm at the same time. You want to get all of the blunt part of the impact, but none of the sharp part of the impact. Otherwise you can jar the pieces apart. If you have to work the seam on its edge, you want to be very, very gentle. It's really easy to rupture the weld like that. Once you've lost your welding heat, you want to go over it with the brush again, clean out as much gunk as you can, then add more borax and put it back in the fire. You want to get it back to a welding temperature again. At this point, the pieces are tacked together, but they're not properly fused. I'm inserting the mandrel again, and I'm closing up the head just below the eye. The cross pin is good for working in tight corners like this, and you can use the corner of the anvil to get the other side. I ruptured my weld a little bit here, and the outer edge lifted up, but not to be dismayed, it can be easily fixed.
Then I brush it off again and add more borax. At this stage I could also peel off the wire wrap. If I was making some fancy pattern welded knife I would do so, but as this is just a rough and dirty axe, I'm not going to bother. The sparks that fly from the metal during the forge weld are molten borax. It's important during this stage to make sure that you've got nothing easily flammable nearby. Proper safety equipment is also crucial. My safety glasses have got a couple globs of borax that are melted into the lens. You want to forge down the billet to about half of its original thickness. By this point it should be forge welded pretty well. A pretty good rule of thumb is that you've got three heats to make it stick. By which point, if the weld hasn't taken, there's probably too much gunk in the middle for you to fix it without taking the whole thing apart. The last half inch did not take, so I'm just going to cut it off. I don't have much confidence in the weld, so I'm using a chop saw rather than a chisel. This is easier on the seam. Now I'm going to work down the bit into the appropriate shape. Unfortunately, I overheated the piece here. This type of spark means the metal is burning. It's not the end of the world, but it means your surface isn't going to be quite so nice. I'm forging down the bit at a welding heat. You can improve a successful weld past three heats, even if you can't repair a failed weld. You want the hammer to strike diagonally so that the bit gets smeared and elongated. You want to sort of pull with the hammer on one face, and you want to push with the hammer on the other face. One of the characteristics of blacksmithing is that you will get burned. Even if you're wearing gloves, you still might get burned. The worst burn I ever had was when a glob of liquid borax fell down the back of my glove and I couldn't get it out. I don't bother with gloves anymore. I could use the extra dexterity anyway. Quenching bucket plays a dual purpose after all. Here I'm using the cross peen to spread the bit of the axe a little bit more. By this point there should be a clear top and bottom to the axe. The top edge should be more or less flat, and the bottom edge should be curved. You want to be careful not to smush the eye too much. It's really risky to use the mandrel again at this stage. If you close the eye up too much and you put the mandrel in, you might split your welds right down the middle. A couple more heats and you should have it to a state that you're pretty happy with. You want the edge to be pretty close to sharp, and you want it to be a certain breadth. Other than that, it's all down to eye. If you're not happy with it, just take another heat. And if it's good enough, don't make another blow. Now for the heat treat. Heat it up to the point where it's no longer magnetic. Get a magnet on a stick for this. Then quench just the edge in the bucket of water. Then take it out, and once the water has evaporated from the edge, quench the edge again. Repeat until the whole blade is cool. Once the blade is cooled to a certain point, you can quench the whole thing very briefly to speed the process along. Once all the glow has left the metal, you can quench it with impunity. This isn't really the best way to heat treat an axe blade, but it's quick and reliable and gives decent enough results. Now the grinding. This is pretty quick and only takes a few minutes. First you want to get the profile right. Once you've cleaned up the profile, then you grind the edge. Just rock it back and forth. You're done when you can no longer see a flat section looking at it head on. Then it's over to the wire brush to take off the last of the mill scale and to give any ground sections a nice matte finish. You could also add a maker's mark at this stage. Because the outer layer is just mild steel, you can put the maker's mark in cold. So now the axe head is done, it's time to put a handle on it. I'm cutting a section from a broken shovel handle for this. Shovel handles are made from top-notch wood, and they're already almost the right shape. And it's always good to use waste products wherever you can. I'm taking a pencil and marking the inside edge of the eye. This will show me how far I have to work the handle down. You want the handle to be vaguely teardrop shaped and to taper ever so slightly from top to bottom. You want to get it as close as you can with the draw knife, then you want to stop and switch over to the spoke shave. If you think you're close, you can put the head and the handle over your vise and try and hammer it in. You don't want to hammer it too far though. You might split your weld if you try and force it before it's ready. The corners of the eye will have left marks where it didn't fit. 
the soot on the inside of the eye will also have rubbed off a little. Eventually it'll pound in almost all the way. You want to leave a little bit of a lump at the end so that it can't work free as the wood compresses. And then there we go, it's done. The blade took about a half hour to make, the handle took about 15 minutes. So, there you go. Not the nicest thing I've ever made, but not bad for less than an hour's work. That's all I have to say. I hope you found this interesting. That's all for now. Goodbye.